Welsh is a Celtic language spoken in Wales by about 740,000 people, and in the Welsh colony in Patagonia, Argentina, by several hundred people. There are also Welsh speakers in England, Scotland, Canada, the USA, Australia, and New Zealand. At the beginning of the 20th century about half of the population of Wales spoke Welsh as an everyday language. Towards the end of the century, the proportion of Welsh speakers had fallen to about 20 percent. According to the 2001 census 582,368 people can speak Welsh, 659,301 people can either speak, read or write Welsh, and 797,717 people, 28 percent of the population, claim to have some knowledge of the language. According to a survey carried out by S4C, the Welsh language TV channel, the number of Welsh speakers in Wales is around 750,000, and about 1.5 million people can understand Welsh. In addition, there are an estimated 133,000 Welsh speakers living in England, about 50,000 of them in the Greater London area. So the way a mother rat takes care of its pups is by licking and grooming, nipple switching and arch back nursing. So the rats that do a lot of licking and grooming and their last rats that rule very little. But most rats are in between. So that resembles a human behaviors as well, right? You have mothers that are highly mothering and mothers that couldn't care less, and most mothers are somewhere in between. So if you look at these rats, so all you do you observe them and put them in separate cages. So you put the high liquors in one cage, not the mothers, but the offspring and the low liquors in another cage and then you let them grow and they're adults now, their mothers are long buried and you look in the brain and you see that those who had high licking mothers express a lot of glucocorticoid receptor, gene and though, so our lawmakers express know that reflects a number of factors and that results in a different stress response, but this is not the only difference. We found later on there are hundreds of genes that are differently expressed. So if you get in a mutation, you know polymorphism once in a million. Climate change, some adverse effects of climate changes to agricultural productions. Some lands are unsuitable for growing crops. There will be millions of people facing hunger in Africa in the future. Climate change will result in less production and less food. 
It is difficult for developing countries to deal with climate change due to their financial status and other issues. There are many people living in hunger, especially in Africa. The climate change has devastating effects on world economy. The tropical areas on Earth are dry and hot and are originally not suitable for food production. The change of the climate leads to extreme weather conditions such as flood and hurricane, which exacerbates the food production. As a result, it leads to a continuous decline in food supply annually around 10 to 17 percent. And this trend is perceived to be continue in the future, by 2070. The region suffering the most will be some African countries. Here, just the motherly launching just hundreds of genes in one shot, and it changes them in a very stable way that you can look at the old rat, and you can say whether it was licked or not. But you can also say by behavior. So if you walk to the cages to the room the rats that were poorly lit are highly anxious, hard to handle, aggressive, and, and the rats that were very well handled as off as little pups. They are much more relaxed much easier to handle. So you know. Like every technician in the lab knows looking at the adult rat, how it was licked when it was a little tough any question, of course, mechanism, how does this work? This is a bomb calorimeter. This is the actual piece of equipment that researchers use to calculate the energy content of either biodiesel or maybe even the potato chips that you had for lunch today. When they calculate the amount of energy, they're going to calculate it in heat units, which would either be gels or calories. I want you to look inside the bomb calorimeter inside here. You can see that there's a silver bucket water goes all in here, and this is actually the bomb is the smaller silver cylinder what you do is put your fuel sample in there, then these two electrodes are connected to the bomb. These provide the spark that will ignite your sample when your sample burns, or combust that gives off energy. So how is the energy collected, or how did a scientist figure out how much energy is being given off?
Well, it's a closed system, there's a lid here that goes on top of this calorimeter, and what's in here, in the lid is a stirrer. The stirrer is going to stir the water. That's in this big pool here, so that the heat given off from the sample is going to warm the water, in a uniform way. This is the temperature probe, this goes down in the water also and measures the change in temperature because as the sample is burned, it will give off heat and the temperature the water will increase. So the lid goes on the sample is prepared. The last thing that you need to make a combustion reaction happen is oxygen and at some point, during the process, some oxygen is added by a tank. That's connected to the calorimeter here. So we are going to burn a sample of the biodiesel that you've prepared and get some feedback on the energy content of it. You'll be able to use this to compare it to petroleum-based fuels like octane. Nerve myelination of the brain take place in sequence, starting from the primitive brain, the limbic brains, and brain thought. Neural pathways are more frequently used to make more myelin thicken. Increasingly thicker myelin, the faster the nerve impulses or signals travel along nerves. Therefore, a growing child is encouraged to receive input from the environment in accordance with its development. I believe our borders should be open. But if that is not politically acceptable for now, Europe should at least open up a legal route for people from developing countries to come work here. Over time, hopefully, we can move to a position where borders are completely open. The brain is basically built from the bottom up first the brain builds basic circuits that are responsible for basic skills, and then more complex circuits are built on top of those basic circuits as we develop more complex skills. Biologically, the brain is prepared to be shaped by experience. It's expecting the experiences that a young child has to literally influence the formation of its circuitry, it's built into our biology. The interaction between genetics and experience that shapes brain architecture is embedded in a reciprocal relationship, the relationships that children have with the adults in their lives. And by that we mean what we refer to as the serve and return nature of children's interaction with their adults' development. And the impact of experience on development is not a one-way street. It's a back-and-forth interaction. The brain is a highly integrated organ which has multiple sections that specialize in different kind of processes, 
So we have parts of the brain that are involved more in cognitive function and other parts that are involved in processing of emotion and parts involved in seeing and hearing. This phenomenon of conservation is explained by what we call the first law of thermodynamics, sometimes referred to as the law of energy conservation. The law states energy cannot be created or destroyed. Energy can be described as the ability to do work, where work is the movement of matter when a force is applied to it. A closed system is a system in which no matter or energy is allowed to enter or leave. The first law of thermodynamics tells us that the amount of energy within an ecosystem is constant. It doesn't change. An open system, on the other hand, allows stuff to come in and go out. Since most systems are not closed, the laws of energy conservation can be rephrased to say that the change in the internal energy of the system is equal to the difference between the amount of energy coming in, minus the amount of energy going out. In other words, the amount of energy in the system can change, but only if it comes from another system or goes to another system. At any rate, systems, whether they're open or closed, do not create or destroy energy. Rather, energy can enter from one system and leave to another. Wind turbine is a device that will convert wind into mechanical movement, which we can use to power water pump or electricity generator. Now the power that the turbine creates is obviously dependent on the wind speed, it also depended obviously on the number of sails, the area of the sails and the angle of the sails makes to the wind. So you can imagine if the turbine blades flat onto the wind, the wind's going to just bend it, if there is slight angle when the wind hits it, it's going to turn the blades. We can use that for powering things. Now, we're going to have a go, making some of the very, very simple paper windmills, a sort of things that you can make from the bits and pieces lying around home, and use that to drive very small generator to power electronic devices.
Cholera epidemics ravaged the city in 1832 and 1848. In the epidemic of 1848, 5% of the inhabitants of these two neighborhoods died. Traffic circulation was another major problem. The widest streets in these two neighborhoods were only 5 meters wide, the narrowest were only 1 or 2 meters wide. Wagons, carriages, and carts could barely move through the streets. The center of the city was also a cradle of discontent and revolution between 1830 and 1848. Seven armed uprisings and revolts had broken out in the center of Paris. Particularly along the Faubourg Saint Antoine, around the Hotel de Ville Isle, and around Montaigne Saint Genevieve on the left bank. The residents of these neighborhoods had taken up paving stones and blocked the narrow streets with barricades, and had to be dislodged by the Army. 3345. Many parents communicate and educate their children with two languages, probably because they both know more than one language, or they come from different countries. Most of these parents think this can benefit their children's language learning. But actually, kids will get confused when their parents use different languages from each other to describe the same object. If one parent sticks to one language, and the other one sticks to another language, their children will not be confused anymore.